My name is Dan Miller. I work for Unity Technologies as an XR evangelist. So I mostly focus on AR and VR. Um, but I've done a lot of mobile game development in the past and built a lot of Android applications. And what I want to do today is talk a little bit about some best practices for Unity development inside the Android ecosystem. So there's going to be some fairly kind of basic or easy wins, as well as talking about things you can do and how to kind of understand and start some of the debugging process, as well as some newer features and things that are maybe still a little bit in early access. And if you're kind of publishing your game in the near coming months, you'll see some of these things starting to come out and just some strategies that you can take advantage of as a developer. So before I get started, I want to ask how many people have heard of Unity or are aware of the Unity editor or engine? All right, lots of hands there. So if you're not aware, Unity is a piece of software or a tool for writing interactive applications. And we've done a lot of work to make it very easy to develop and create your games and publish them to stores like the Google Play Store. There's actually integrated settings in the publish settings so you can set up a lot of your things build out your APK and push it up right away. All right, and so what I wanna do first is just go through what I call some easy wins, some basic kind of techniques to consider when publishing and developing your application within the Unity editor. Next, I'm gonna talk about ADB, the Android Debug Bridge, how you can set that up and how you can utilize that to get some information about what's actually happening with your application running on Android back to your uh, PC. And after that, I'm just going to talk a little bit about kind of reducing the APK size on your application so that you can uh, make it easier for users to get a hold of your app, try it right away, and not have to wait for a long download time or downloading it over something like Wi-Fi. All right, so let's start with some easy wins. The first thing I want to talk about is just texture atlasing. And what this is, is it's really common in 2D development where you pack all of your sprites together in a single texture. What this allows you to do is reduce draw calls, and you can then kind of split it up to use different little sprite sheets for each individual sprite, but have them all kind of packed here on a certain texture. And while this works really well for 2D, it's also pretty common to do it for 3D as well. You can see there's two little bug creatures here. One's more of a dragonfly and one's a ladybug, but they're actually using the same texture here and just referencing different parts of it. So when you're creating things like 3D assets, you can consider laying out the UVs on a shared UV sheet here and then reference the same texture to, again, just reduce draw calls and kind of optimize your application. Now, the other thing to consider is kind of how you're uh, compressing your textures and what sort of shaders you're using to render your 3D models. And again, this is more on the 3D side, but does apply a little bit to 2D. So, one thing to keep in mind is right now inside the Unity editor, the standard shader is PBR or physically based rendering. And this is meant to kind of reflect the lighting conditions and features in the real world. We have reflective surfaces that are able to kind of reflect the environment around them, similar to what we have that exist in the real world, things like different lighting settings and stuff like that. Now, depending on what sort of application you're making or what sort of stylistic choice you're making with your models, it's not always really appropriate to have these PBR uh, materials and have all these different options for what you need. You can see here that these two bugs are a little bit more stylized or cartoon-like, so it doesn't necessarily make sense to have them fully kind of going through the processes that's required to render them based on physically-based properties. So what I've done here is I actually have two different uh, materials that are backed, one by the standard shader and one by a much lighter shader here. And you can see the uh, kind of settings here. And even without fully understanding what's happening at the shader level, you can easily see the contrast between the differences of the kind of instructions or the maps that are associated with this. And you'll see here on one side, we have just a simple texture assignment. And on the other, while we have that texture assignment, we also have all these different settings, but I haven't actually adjusted them all at all. And if I go back there, you can kind of almost barely see a difference between how the lighting and the rendering is set up here. So something to really keep in mind, depending if you're using 3D models and the actual stylistic approach that you want 
to your assets is just considering using a more light, uh, lightweight shader or a mobile optimized shader. So within Unity in the material settings, you can actually drop down, choose the shader that's backed uh, for that material. And there is a specific mobile one as well. So really kind of consider this when setting up your 3D models. And the last thing, and this is something that's kind of unique to the Android platform, is within the Unity editor in the application namespace and API, we actually have an is genuine check. And what you can do here is in your code, you can go and check if the APK is genuine. And what it means to be genuine is if it is directly downloaded from the Google Play Store and has not been altered. Now, we all know that APKs can be uh, fairly easily distributed, and this is really helpful for testing or you know, letting your buddy try out your game before it's released. And what you can do in your app is that you can use this is genuine check to potentially restrict some features or things like that. So you could restrict access to the in-app store that's in your thing. You could also restrict access to maybe certain levels or something if the, if the is genuine check is not passed. Now, something to keep in mind is that this is a fairly expensive call. So if you are using it, consider using it at a single point before you kind of show um, different features or applications. And don't try to call this every frame as that will get pretty expensive. All right, and now I just want to dive a little bit into debugging, and this is kind of a process that I go through when developing any apps on Android. It is a little bit more rudimentary, um, but kind of helps you get a base start to start to understand what's going on and how to integrate this. And so for this, I use ADB. So ADB is the Android debug bridge, and what it is is it's basically a robust command line tool that allows you to link in directly to your Android device. You can do this through USB by just plugging it into your device, opening up the ADB console, and then there's a lot of associated commands as well as flags that you can use to get information back. Now, one thing to keep in mind is that ADB gives you a lot of information back. And if you're not using any filtering, it'll be hard to even really read or understand what's happening as information just continually flies through in the console itself. So what can you do for this? Well, you can actually set a specific Unity flag, but again, I just wanted to kind of highlight here that as a developer, when you're connecting your device via ADB or via, via your computer, you can do it via USB. And if you're using a more modern phone, one thing to keep in mind is that you will need to unlock and look at your phone and actually allow those USB debugging. And that's an option in the developer settings. So if you guys are developing for Android, hopefully your Android uh, device is already in developer mode. And there's a little checkbox there for allowing USB debugging. And then from here, you can connect it to your computer and then start uh, hooking up ADB and getting some information back. It is also available via Wi-Fi, and you can do this via the connected uh, editor within, in the console window within Unity. So as I mentioned, there's actually a flag or a callback here, and you can do a dash S Unity, and that'll give you specific callbacks from your app running in Unity. So here, I just have a small little debug log that every time I change the orientation uh, from portrait to landscape, it just outputs a debug message within my console in the app. And as I'm running this on my phone, and as it's connected, you can actually see these callbacks through ADB. Now, it'll also output things like errors or null reference exceptions, which if you've developed a lot of applications in Unity, you know you always get those a lot where certain things aren't hooked up or certain things aren't initialized before you're trying to call them. And you can get that information back via ADB, so you can start kind of tracing and understanding where those issues are coming from. All right, and now what I wanna do is talk a little bit about reducing the size of your APK. So within Unity, and just really when building any sort of application, especially in the mobile ecosystem, you know that how fast your user can actually play and experience your game is crucial in getting them to uh, be retained and continue to play it. And so part of this is kind of a strategy for delivering a small APK or a small application that they can get started with right away, 
they can download not over Wi-Fi, and they can really just start experiencing. So for this, there's a couple different strategies, both built into Unity and the Google Play Store. And I want to talk about how you as a developer can start taking advantage of those. All right, so the first one is splitting the APK by target architecture. Now, this is a little bit of a newer function. So it's available in the latest version of Unity in 2018.2. So that's the latest stable release available now. And what it allows you to do is it allows you to check which APK target architectures you specifically want when you build out your app. Now, the Play Store actually allows you to upload different versions of the APK for all these target architectures, and then depending on what device you're on and what target architecture it has, it'll actually download these separate APKs. Previously, inside Unity, when you would package up an APK, you would target certain architectures and it would all kind of be combined into a single APK, which ended up bloating your size a little bit. So this is just an easy kind of win where you can separate things out and it'll output different APKs depending on which checkboxes you hit. This is also a step towards compliance with things like the new Android P, as well as um, just some requirements as you start to build out your apps. The other thing that's supported is something called APK expansion files, or o OBB. And what this is, is this is a way to build a kind of base unit of your game. Think of something like the main menu and the first couple levels and then actually split it up into what we call expansion files, which are downloaded alongside your game. And again, this is a way for your users to uh, download your application right away, and then start feeding in the necessary data to then experience later levels. If someone downloads your app right now, they might, be able to, they might just wanna play the first couple levels and not have to wait for the entire thing to download or the entire size of your APK. So how do you take advantage of this within Unity? Well, there's a small checkbox there to build out these OBB files within the published settings under player settings. Once you build this out, it'll actually again kind of separate your APK and through the Google Play Store, you can upload these alongside of it. Now, because Android is a more of an open ecosystem, you do have to be careful about users deleting these OBB files. And you can't really restrict them from cleaning up their phone, uh, deleting some things to try to clear up maybe space for another app or something like that. So it is required that if you do this, you actually provide a way for the user to re-download these files within your app. So how do you do this? Well, Google provides some documentation on how to actually integrate it on their side of things for native applications. And on the Unity side, if you guys just all want to take a picture of this exact function and call back, and I was just kidding on that, there's actually a asset store package here that we've written that allows you to easily go and kind of integrate that extra download that's required if you do split up your application using these OBB files. So again, this is kind of a setting built into Unity to split up your app in order to have kind of the main part of the game, something like the main menu and the first couple levels, and then expansion files that complete the rest of your application. And the real goal here is to try to get under that 100 megabyte limit so that your users are not required to download your app via Wi-Fi. And so this, you can see, is just the Google Play OBB, and it's free on the Unity Asset Store, which just has this little code snippet here, as well as some sample scenes and examples that allows you to then put a button into your app, which is a requirement for the Play Store when using that. All right, and now I want to talk a bit about Google Play Instant. So this was mentioned in a lot of previous talks, and it's something that I think is really exciting and kind of what's possible in coming in the future. So Google Play Instant is a way for users to try out your game even quicker. It's a smaller bite size experience that may be something like a single level or really a taste of what your full application and game can be. And how do you start to integrate this or how do you build this within Unity? 
Well, Google's actually made a plugin. It's still in beta, but the cool thing you can see here is that it's very actively being worked on. I think this release uh, says here that it was released something like four days ago. That was actually four days ago. So eight days ago, this plugin was updated and released, and it's really kind of being actively developed, and it is kind of a special part of the store right now where you can give your users access to it. Now, to integrate this and use this within Unity, there's a lot of additional kind of steps and setups that you need to go through fairly carefully, but Google has done a really good job of providing a menu here, and it actually walks you through the required steps. You drop down the Google Play Instant, you can actually build to the Instant architecture and then run that on your device, and it gives you this small little sample of your app and packages it all up for you. So this is directly integrated into Unity, so you can start taking advantage of it now and build these instant play apps. And that's pretty much it for my talk, so thanks a lot.